everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm starting a new series of Behind the Design where I'm going to be taking you through the process I took for this app design and case study. This series is perfect for freelancers as well as designers who are building their portfolio out with personal projects. So feel free to pause this video and check out the case study that I'm referring to on Behance. I've got a link in the description below. Okay, so part one of this series is going to include writing your research plan and recruiting participants. Let's start from the very beginning. You're either gonna be starting with a brief if you are working with a client or just with a topic if you are creating this project for your portfolio. So for me, since I'm just working on this project as a portfolio builder, I wanted to choose a topic that I'm really interested in and would love to get work in in the future. So my topic is aromatherapy and specifically aromatherapy in the home. And before I could really dive in, I had to do a little bit of background research. I had to figure out exactly what problems people were having within the aromatherapy space as well as what opportunities are there for technology. So I did a little bit of background research as to who are the big players in the aromatherapy industry, um, specifically those who make diffusers. And I also had to figure out who they were marketing to, who is actually buying these diffusers, why are they buying them, why are they using aromatherapy, what um, benefits are they gaining as well as where they're using it so in what context and in what scenarios and so to figure this out I really just went to Google I did a lot of Google searching I read through some forums I thought about my own um, experiences with aromatherapy and my diffusers that I use at home I talked to some friends and I came up with a problem statement and a hypothesis that I wanted to set out to prove or disprove with my research the problem statement I'm working with is People who use essential oil diffusers in their homes want to integrate aromatherapy into their daily routines to stimulate desired feelings and encourage intended action, but they struggle to do so because of the level of effort and forethought required. And my hypothesis was a tool which allows people to automate their aromatherapy experience will enable the use of essential oils not only for their health benefits, but as sensory stimulus for entering an intended headspace within the home environment. So like I said, the whole idea behind doing research is to either prove or disprove this hypothesis, and also, of course, come up with ideas as to how you might go about solving the problem by talking to real users. So in order to conduct really effective research, it's important to first put together a research plan. This is something that one of my mentors helped me figure out how to do, and it was something that I came back to so often throughout my research and really just guided me through the whole process. So a great research plan has a few different sections. So the first section is just the overview, just write a super general statement around your problem space and what you're trying to achieve with your research. Next, you're gonna outline your research goals. So what are you trying to figure out throughout this research? This could be a ton of different things. For me, I wanted to better understand the target user's motivations, beliefs, desires around this topic of aromatherapy in the home. I also wanted to understand the environment and the scenarios in which these types of experiences happen for them. I wanted to learn what might be missing from their current experience, and I also wanted to gather some general data about how people feel about digital wellness. Is it something they think about? Is this something that is going to come into play when it comes to my solution? So for example, if I found that people did not like the idea of tech facilitating a wellness experience or a self-care experience, then I know that an app is not a great solution for this problem. Next, you're going to be outlining the methodology as well as the tasks that you want your participants to complete within the interview. So this is just a foundational interview. This isn't a user test or anything like that. And so the tasks can be really simple. For example, for me, the methodology I wanted to use was just a remote interview. I wanted it to be a discussion. I wanted it to be very informal and I wanted them to walk me through how they use their diffuser within their home if that was something that they were comfortable showing me. I also outlined here how long the interview was going to be as well as how I was going to compensate my participants. 
And lastly, a little bit in detail of how you will be conducting the session. Will it be over Zoom or how will you physically be doing the interview? The next thing you wanna outline is the participant criteria. So you can't just interview anyone off the street. So look at your research goals and figure out what requirements people need to meet in order to be a good participant in your research study. So for me, when I was doing my background research, I found a targeted age group that I thought would be helpful to work within. I also knew I wanted to interview people who already use aromatherapy regularly. And I knew that I wanted to get a variety of different home ecosystems. So maybe people who live alone, with a partner, with roommates, with children. I wanted to get a variety of those so that I could know that I'm getting a good representative sample of data. For you, you might think about a particular profession or location or interests in terms of how you are choosing your interview participants. It also might be important um, to figure out their income or other things like that that will make sure that your participants are a good fit for your research study. And lastly, you should outline the timeline in which you are completing this research. So when are you going to be doing the recruiting? When are you going to hold the study and all of the interviews? And when are you going to synthesize your findings and data? And so this is important because you want to make sure that the people that you're reaching out to have availability during the time where you are conducting the interviews. Okay, so now that you've got your research plan, you have everything you need to create a recruiting post to send out on social media and share around so that you can get people to sign up for your study. When you're creating this post, it's important to keep it really general. And what I mean is don't keep it general in terms of what they should expect and um, the time commitment and the compensation, that should be very specific, but keep it general in terms of what you're going to be asking them about. So I'll give you an example. For my particular research study, as I mentioned, I knew I wanted to be talking mostly about aromatherapy in the home, but I also had some really general questions I wanted to get answered about self-care in the home and about digital wellness. And so those are a lot more general where I didn't want them to have the preconceived idea of aromatherapy in the back of their mind. I wanted them to not know exactly what to expect and just come expecting to talk about self-care in the home. And so that's what I included in my recruiting post. So like I mentioned, it's important to include the incentive. So what are you compensating them with as well as how much time they should be um, setting aside for this interview if they get picked. And of course, you want to include a call to action. So for me, because I needed to weed out out some people and figure out exactly if they meet the requirements, I included a Google form that they should fill out so that I could get a little bit more information from them to figure out if they're a good fit for the study. So in this survey, I included questions about their age, their living arrangements, um, as well as how often they use the following um, self-care practices, of course, aromatherapy being one of them. And so this survey acts as a great bridge for you to collect some data and also figure out who to reach out to for your actual research interviews. My last tip for creating this post is to design it really well. So you are all designers, so you should be able to make this look nice in order to build trust and try to encourage engagement so that people will wanna sign up for your study. So now you might be wondering how to get enough people to see this post and sign up. If you're working with a client, this is a great time for them to share out this recruitment post. But if you are just doing this as a personal project and you don't have anyone to share it out for you, I have some tips that might be helpful. So the first thing that I did that was really helpful for me was I looked around at some influencers that I follow that might have an audience that would be a good fit. So I follow this YouTuber, um, her channel is called Femhead, and she posts a lot about self-care and I just figured that a lot of people who watch her videos and follow her on Instagram would be a really good fit and might be interested in participating. So I kind of went out on a limb and 
emailed her to see if she wouldn't mind sharing out my survey. I explained in detail what it was and who I am and exactly what I was trying to do and you know just kind of left it at no pressure but I would love it if you would share this out I think your followers would be interested and she was really sweet and she ended up doing that for me and that's how I got a lot of my participants if you're not super comfortable with that you could look at Facebook groups that have people who might be interested and talk to the host and see if they wouldn't mind sharing your post you can also look at Reddit threads where people are already talking about the topic and throw in your link in there. You can put it out on Twitter and just ask your friends to retweet it. There really are so many ways to share this out and you would be surprised at how quickly you will get some great participants for your study. And on that note, it's really important to keep an eye on who you're getting to fill out this form. So this will allow you to see what gaps need to be filled and where you might need to do a little bit more recruiting or whether you can stop your efforts altogether and just start reaching out to people. For my project, I ended up interviewing 12 people with four different home ecosystems and that ended up being perfect for me. There's really no perfect amount of people that you should be interviewing. It's just whatever works for your project and your budget. And then of course, once you go through the results and figure out who would be a good fit, you can just keep those names and emails and data in a spreadsheet and start reaching out to them to see if they will book a time with you. Don't miss the next video because I'm going to be showing you how I put together my discussion guide as well as sharing some tips for conducting research interviews. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit subscribe and leave any questions you have down below as always. I'll see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye.